Why does Buddhism encourage celibacy rather than the married life? Now, this is the question. So you have to know what is celibacy. What is celibacy? Hmm? What is the meaning of this word, celibacy? Hmm? And you use another big word. Celibacy means keeping away from sex life, in simple language, celibacy. So the question is, so why does Buddhism encourage rather than encouraging married life? What is your opinion regarding this question? Any idea? Is it important? after this world. So people ask this kind of questions. So what about the other religions? Mm. Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism. There are so many religions. Do you think all the other religions also encourage people to observe celibacy. Yes or no? Yes, some of them. Hinduism, oldest religion. Hindu priests do not observe celibacy because they are Brahmins. Hindu priests are Brahmins. They are married people. But many of them are very orthodox. They don't like to eat any food cooked by women, touched by women. But they are married people. So can you imagine the nature of this religion? Because they are very particular about their food. That is what Swami Vivekananda, a Hindu uh, a revolutionist, who has said, referring to the Brahmins, he says, your religion is in your cooking pot not in your mind, because they are very particular about food. To them that is religion. But after their renunciation, uh, those Hindu sadhus, they are called sadhus, keep away from family life. Now this is the traditional practice in India, amongst the followers of many other religions, like Jainism also the same. Then in Sikhism, Punjabis observe, practice this religion. There is no such thing as celibacy. Then Christianity, in early Christianity, most of those Catholics, even today, observe celibacy. Later, when Christians separated from Catholics, 
group formed protestants and divided into various denominations and they do not observe this only catholics then muslims to them there is no religious value whatsoever by observing this as a precept or a religious principle they say they can find any religious value because they refer to their their holy quran even in the bible also it mentions that god created man and woman and also mentions now it is your duty to increase the produce so this if we keep away from sex life we are going against the will of god or this is their interpretation so they never appreciate a buddhist and hindu or christian attitude of celibacy but there are many other similarities between uh, in uh, what we call uh, islam and buddhism and christianity then what is the direct approach to this subject from the buddhist point of view the buddha did not introduce this as a religious law it is not compulsory those who think that they can lead a normal life peaceful life without taking so many responsibilities burdens and by realizing the nature of a spiritual development and peace of mind they prefer this particular precept for others there is no restriction that they must observe this as a precept but after their renunciation mm. the buddha's advice is if they violate this particular principle it is difficult for them to carry on their a spiritual development because of the disturbances not only that responsibilities disturbances and temptation these things disturb the mind for ordinary lay buddhist there is no such religious principle that they should observe this celibacy but occasionally they observe when they observe eight precepts or ten precepts on full moon or new moon day they keep away from sexual then for laborers there is another precept or principle that is called sexual misconduct not sexual misconduct means illegal indecent or immoral there are various ways people indulge or experience their sex life by bluffing by disturbing by force 
And when you read newspapers, nowadays you can see what is happening to mankind. Very inhuman attitude. They, they do not behave actually as human beings. But we also cannot say that animals are worse than human beings. Because animals never do that. After satisfying their sex life, animals never kill their females. Now we can understand the cruelty or selfishness that we human beings maintain in our mind for our own satisfaction. So that is why human beings are very, very unreliable living beings in this world. Cannot trust, cannot understand the nature of their mind. We also cannot say that I have mentioned very clearly in that book, Happy Marriage Life, the Buddhist attitude, the Buddha always gives his blessing for those married people. If a man can find out understanding why, if a, a woman can find out understanding husband, they are mutual understanding. You see, they remarkable and they are very fortunate they are. The Buddha never condemned married life. At the same time, he also pointed out the problems, the difficulties that you had to face. It is true. When you study every married couple, if you can intervene, Personally, you can understand what sort of problems, misunderstanding, jealousy, suspicion that they maintain because of their married life. So they are not very happy, but they are bound to carry on, even then break it separate. When they cannot tolerate any more, they separate. In certain cases, they kill each other. Now this is the day. It depends on how you handle it. There are many things you have to learn, you have to think, having seen having heard what is happening all over the world. You have to prepare to tolerate <coughs> so many problems, physical and mental, internal and external problems. Without problem, there is no married life. Almost every day there are problems. But understanding people know how to overcome it. Without aggravating the situation, they know where to apply patience or understanding. And then they can carry on. Otherwise, it is very dangerous. It is miserable, actually. So by considering all these things, some people decide. Better to keep away from this. Easy for me. So we can devote more time to do some service to others. 
and also to maintain peace in our mind. But the trouble is, naturally, every living being, not only human being, every living being that exists in this world, not only in this world, many other parts of the world also maintain their own intrinsic, the natural instinct, like animal instinct. It is natural. To suppress this or to control is not so easy. If we try to control this by force, uh, then we invite some more trouble. Mental problem, nerve problem, many of those neurotic cases. The cause of all these problems is that they have tried to suppress something, not only this, by force. Then the reaction they have to experience in various ways. So well, that is why the Buddha did not introduce any religious law should not observe any religious principles as a religious law. This is the law given by the Buddha, given by God, given by somebody. Therefore we must observe. If there is no understanding, why we should observe this? just to follow, just to obey the law. When we observe certain things, lot of intolerance we have to experience. Now let us define this word. This word is called karma loka sensual world, human, animal, and devasos, in the same group, those who indulge, those who experience sensual pleasures by using their senses. Now we have five senses. We use all these senses to gain some sort of pleasure. Every minute we are doing it. That's why we need beautiful, colorful, attractive things to please one sense eye consciousness. Mind experience is not the eye. Eye cannot experience anything. Then sound. Different kinds of sound, vibration, music, singing, rhythm, and soothing, tune. We entertain Ear consciousness. Then a smelling, various kind of fragrance or oh, nice smell, sweet smell, perfume. We apply everywhere to please only. But only human beings experience 
If you apply some perfume, the dog or a cat, they run away, they never come back for many hours because they cannot tolerate it. To them it is poison. Because sometimes after bathing, I spread a little bit of eau de color. Cats or dogs, they run away and never come back the whole day into my room. They cannot tolerate that. You can see the difference. Only human beings. To them this is very important. How much they spend for just to please this this world. <laughs> How much they spend. Now this is called Kamala, sensual world. Then mouth. Always we try to get nice taste. Mouth cannot experience the taste. This, this one is connected to our mind. The mind experiences the taste by using this. So we spend so much to indulge this. Then the physical body, we like to hold or embrace very soothing, nice, comfortable things, which gives us some sort of feeling, sensation. Because throughout our body, this sensation is working, connected to the mind. So when we touch very soft and nice things, we get some sort of feeling. Cats and dogs always like to come and rub their bodies on us. And we think, oh, they like us so much, that's why they come and rub. But we also can see they go and rub the pillars and the walls and the trees also. So it clearly shows that what they need is just some sort of rubbing. So they also experience this. Now these are the five. Beside these five, if these senses are not working, When the mind is alone, if mind does not work through any of these senses, then the mind creates mental objects. Enjoy. Create daydreams. Wonderful thing the mind can create. Imagination. And they satisfied with their own mental image that they have created. So that is what we are doing. Then the Buddha's advice is this. If you do not discipline them properly, train them properly, Always you can misuse, abuse, and disturb others to gain some sort of pleasure through one of these senses. That's why discipline is important. So we must know how to indulge or gain this pleasure without violating anything, without disturbing anybody, we can gain this pleasure in decent way, respectable way, harmless way. Our Buddhism never goes against this. You can experience or you can indulge all the five senses without violating any of your religious principles. You can do that. 
in Deva Loka, Devas experience more pleasure than human beings. Because here we have so many other problems, physical problems. Our sicknesses, old age, these two things are the biggest problems. But they ones are free ones. No only also for them. They exist as they appear and one day disappear. And that is their way of life. But our way of life is different. On this earth, any living being, we start from the very beginning, as a baby, then grow or developing, developing, growing, growing, growing. After middle age, stop our growing, no more development. They turn this way, then coming down and down and down and down. Now we are going down, going down. And nobody in this world who can stop it. Because of this, we worry. We experience pain, unhappiness. We may see changes. We may come to know we are getting old. We know we are very sick, unhappiness. But they were some free from this. But they have many other problems. This is the nature of karma law. Then, why do all these living beings on this earth, human beings, animals, even tiniest creatures, flies, ants, also fight? Why do they fight? Why do they kill? because of these five senses. Now this is the danger of this sensual world. We are crazy to gain sensual pleasure and we violate, disturb, destroy and kill others because of this sensual pleasure. Then we can understand how far we can control or discipline ourselves by controlling our senses. In Dhamma Pada, the Buddha says, Kāyena Sangvaro Sādhu Sādhu Vācāya Sangvaro Manasā Sangvaro Sādhu Sādhu Sabbatsa Sangvaro First we have to discipline these three important things. First, discipline our physical body without abusing and disturbing. Then we must discipline our tongue, our mouth, without using certain words to disturb others. Then discipline our mind without allowing to harbor hatred, anger, Jealousy, grudge, cruelty. Now all the three important things, mind, word, body, control. Then we cannot create any problem. And that is called religious life. If these three things are not there, there is no religious life. You can believe so many things, you can pray, can offer, but if there is no discipline, there is no guarantee. A quiet or nice man or a religious man suddenly can jump like a type, irritation, 
Did somebody provoke and disturb the hidden anger or hatred? Clara. Then no controlling power in that mind. After that, that person can become very violent, aggressive, cruel, very nasty person. But when he is normal, he is very religious. He recites so many sutras, he prays so many times. When he is normal, that is the train that we can understand how far we have control our mind. Then all the objects, visual objects, which create either temptation or hatred, both. We accept so many things, reject many other things. Sound also like this, a smell also like this. Sometimes we think, very nice smell. Sometimes, <laughs> and this is all the five senses we are using in this way. And when you eat something, no taste. Again, very nice, I see. Temptation. So if we become slaves to all these five senses, then we have no time to think about our life. Life is one thing. Indulgence is another thing. Entertaining these five senses is another thing. The purpose of our life is something else. That's why we have to think deeply to understand how long can we experience these pleasures? They are not lasting. Fleeting nature of our pleasure. Uncertainty of all these pleasurable things. Then analyze, think. After that, we know how to control ourselves without becoming slaves. When it is necessary, we know how to entertain ourselves without becoming slaves or without violating. But we should not become slaves to our entertainment. There are many other things for us to do by using this valuable human life, human mind. Then we can avoid so many conflicts, clashes, calamities, jealousy, enmity. If you know how to control this senses. Now see the advantage now. After that we can live or we can lead a peaceful life without grumbling, without worrying. Now this is the nature of calm look. Animals also facing the same problem but less. Because they do not indulge all the five senses just like human beings. So when you consider the life in Deva Lok, they are free from many of these physical problems that we are facing, but they, they are also crazy for sensual pleasure. Because they have craving, they have jealousy, they have anger. And their life very, very tender. It is mentioned some of those devas, 
when suddenly their anger flared, and that anger itself killed that person, died because of that anger. Because the formations of that physical body is not like ours. Because we have four elements, very strong four elements, solidity, fluidity, heat and wind combined together, very solid. But their life or the formations of devas or spirit and some other invisible living being, very lesser degree of those elements, but more mental elements. So physically, actually they are weaker than human beings. Again, certain devas die suddenly while they are playing. If they play a long period, they are, the formations of their physical body cannot tolerate this and suddenly collapse and die. Of course, human beings also die sometimes, sudden heart attack. Now, this is the nature of axis. But in worldly sense, they are more fortunate than human beings. When you go further and further, according to our mental development and mental training and spiritual development, there are some other places higher than Devaloka. That is called Brahma. The nature of their life also differ when you compare to Devaloka. They have reduced one or two senses, sensual pleasure. Experience only two or three. Through their meditation, mental development, they have controlled their senses. When rebirth takes place in one of those problems, they maintain more peace, more contentment, more satisfaction in their life rather than indulgence. And we can see the difference. So they can lead more peaceful life than human beings or than those they want. But still they too have mental impurities. They too have craving and they have ignorance. Therefore there is no final salvation for them in that particular Brahma realm or Brahma realm. Rebirth can take place again somewhere else. This is the uncertainty of their life. But there are more advantages to lead a peaceful life. I understand the other day mind spoke on loving kindness, metta, the advantages, isn't it? Did he explain the what sort of result that we experience through this meditation? I think he had no time. I have already told you. But the last one, amongst those eleven kinds of good results that we experience within this lifetime through the practice of this metta, bhavana, or loving kind, they are very practical. But the last one is Uttaring Appati Vidyanto Brahma Loku So one who practices this Mitta Bhavana. Mitta Bhavana does not mean simply to recite something, some words or verses, without uttering even one word. You go on creating, 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 creating your mental waves in your mind without allowing anger, jealousy, grudge and evil forces to appear in the mind. 
with always kindness, compassion, patience, tolerance, all the good qualities are there, goodwill, uh, that is called metta, all the good qualities are there. So person who practice this, what will happen? After his death, rebirth very easily can take place in one of those Brahmanas. That means higher than ordinary human life or higher than the, the to lead a peaceful life. Uh, that is the last result. There are ten kinds of results we experience while we are living here, before our day. So now we are talking about this sensual pressure of or the sexual life. Why Buddhism encourages? So by considering the situation, the problems, difficulty, slavery. Man can become a slave because of this. A woman can become a slave because of this. Man or woman can become immoral or cruel because of this. And they commit suicide because of this. They kill others because of this. And they have no peace throughout their life because of this. So those who can serve it with understanding, not by force, but the Buddha recommended or advised for people to serve those who can, but not compulsory, not a religious Again, we say, as some other religionist mentioned, are we not going against the nature by observing this? Because this is natural. Every living being, even plant life also produces fruits. There is some connection, male, female. Otherwise, cannot produce fruits. Now, it is natural. That is how the world exists. Otherwise, no living things. It is natural. Right. What is our duty? Just to follow the nature blindly without analyzing and understanding what this nature is, whether it is in our favor or whether this nature can create troubles or problems and worries and miseries and suffering, and consider. Now birth is natural. Right? Then we should not stop because it is natural. If birth is natural, then all the other changes that take place during our existence are also natural. Then why do you want to take precaution to stop? Your sicknesses are natural. Why do you want to stop? Why do you want to take medicine? Why do you worry? Why do you cry? Because they know this is natural. But there you never think this is natural. When you grow old, you worry, you cry in your mind. What a pity. It is natural. But how many people are there to say, oh, it is natural, you must face it. Everybody is Brahman. When the death comes nearer to us, oh, scared. I don't want to hear even this word death. I don't want to die. They 
never say, oh, death is natural, therefore I must face it. Really? Why should I worry? Why should I cry? They never say. All these natural things create more headache, more trouble, more problem. Therefore you cannot justify the nature is in our favor. Uh, that is more than enough for us to understand why Buddha has pointed out. If you don't like to face all these problems, uh, this is the If you are ready to face this problem, go ahead. There's nobody to stop. And religion also never say you can, because it is not a religious law. And also never say it is a sin. Buddhism never says sex, life is a sin. Marriage is not a sin, no. neither immoral or moral, free from both. But they can lead moral married life, they can lead without violating their sexual life. Then it becomes moral. So, many people do not know how to analyze unbiasedly. They use, they analyze in a very narrow way, use narrow-minded way to analyze, to understand or to talk about this. Then there are many monks during the Buddha's time. One particular monk, this stroke, he was a married man. Later he became a monk. After staying in the temple for a few months, he found out this life is very dull, no fun. So he disrobed and went home. His wife was there. After staying there for a few months, again he realized, oh, this is very troublesome. I had to work so hard, my wife is grumbling, and I had to go and find out this and that. Again he went to the temple. Those days, they were at liberty. They had so much of freedom to enter into the monastery at any time, to go away at any time. Because the nature of the society is such. Again he had to go back. After staying there for a few months again, he remembered his wife and the family destroyed. Seven times he had done this. Seven times when he came back and appealed to those monks to ordain him again. And those monks also said, now we are not fed up with you. <laughs> we don't want to ordain you anymore. Then he said, no, this time, one way time. <laughs> I realize everything. I never go back. He determined not to go back. After that, he accepted him, Odin, and he became a very good monk. This story tells us the uncertainty of human mind. With the monk or layman, Mind is mind. Changes can take place at any time. Circumstances, temptation, or instability change the mind suddenly. Because we have not trained this proper Our realization about life and the worldly pressure is still not matured enough. Then, why do some people observe this occasion? By taking eight precepts. The Buddha is very understanding religious teacher. That is why he did not introduce this as a law. But encourage people to observe this occasion, to experience more peace in their mind, at least for 24 hours. Later, 
They trade their money. They go on trading, trading again and again and again, going forward. After that, there won't be any difficulty for them to observe. Uh, step by step, slowly, slowly, they go on trading their money. For all the other indulgences, also like dancing, singing, and merry-making, and so many other entertainments also, keep away, only for ten to hours. Then train the mind. After that they go back, again come back, abstain, again go back. Later, very easily they can control their mind. That's why many people say, now they are not interested in all those entities. So we cannot train this mind at once. Most uncertain thing in this world is our mind. A monk who wanted to destroy and go back, saying that we cannot observe all these precepts. So there are so many came to the Buddha and then the Buddha says, don't go. So they advise you to observe only one precept. The Buddha says, whether he can observe or not. He said, one is not very difficult. Yes, okay. And then, I introduce only one precept for you. What is that? Try to control your mind. That is enough. Only one precept. And then he asks how to do that. And then the method given by the Buddha. You know his way of teaching, not like others. When he, when he talks, preach to a person, he knows who this person is. He knows what he is thinking. He knows the weaknesses in that human mind. He knows the potentials also in that human mind. So by analyzing all these things, he directly gives the important point to open the mind. And that is why the spot so many Again, say to Arantha and this and that. Because it's the technique of preaching. So all the other religious teachers just introduce their teaching as a law. Force people to observe practice. If not, preach blindly, not knowing whether people can understand or appreciate or practice or not. So people use religion naturally only for the name's sake, just to talk, just to preach and worship. That is religion. But without talking, without preaching, without worshipping, he can lead the wonderful religious life if you know how to control our mind. Since we do not know the methods, the teacher is important. How to do? On the other hand, this instinct of desire for sex. It not suddenly appear in the human mind, the animal mind. Life after life, every living being developing, 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 developing. That is why it is difficult to get it off. Craving or desire also the same. We cannot get rid of our selfishness. 
very deeply rooted in our mind. Although we can understand it is wrong, very difficult for us to get rid of our selfish body, nothing we develop our selfish It is our habit. Jealousy also like that. Now you can understand the difficulty to be religious or to lead a religious life, to be noble. That is why we worship for that highest achievement. Most difficult thing. If we use religion only for worshipping and praying and reciting and talking, without controlling any of these evil forces in our mind, there is no religion at all. So every religion glorifies about the beauty and development and advance and facilities, shortcut to heaven and so many things. But when you analyze, observe their mind, how jealous they are, how greedy they are, how impatient they are. We can see there is no religion at all in their mind. With some ulterior motive, they come and try to influence others. Use a religious name, religious label. The Buddha did not introduce this kind of religion. That is why the Buddhists never go and force or try to influence others to come and embrace this religion. This is more advanced. Yes, we know it is advanced, but not necessary for us to go and disturb others. If they can satisfy with their religion, leave them alone. Don't disturb them. But others cannot keep quiet. They must come and disturb others. And you can understand why they are so crazy to drag us into their field, their group, ulterior motive behind, some sort of selfishness in their mind. So, this precept, abstaining from sexual pressure, as I mentioned earlier, is not compulsory. It is a voluntary observance according to your understanding. But you also face fact. That means you must be prepared to face so many challenges, worries and problems and pains and sufferings. 